Hi guys, this is Daryl and welcome back to Book Odyssey. Today I'm reviewing the hard science fiction novel The Three Body Problem by Liu Cixin. Every era puts invisible shackles on those who have lived through it, and I can only dance in my chains. The Three Body Problem is a hard science fiction novel written by Chinese writer Liu Cixin and is the first novel of the Remembrance of Earth's Past trilogy. Set against the backdrop of China's Cultural Revolution, a secret military project sends signals into space to establish contact with aliens. An alien civilization on the brink of destruction captures the signal and plans to invade Earth. Meanwhile on Earth, different factions start forming, planning to either welcome the superior beings and help them take over a world seen as corrupt, or to fight against the invasion. The book's title refers to the three-body problem in orbital mechanics, which describes the motion of three-point mass particles under their mutual gravitational interactions. This is a classical problem that covers a large range of situations in astrodynamics. The three-body problem was first published in Chinese in 2006 and was first translated to English for publication in 2014. The book won the Hugo Award for Best Novel in 2015. He believed that technological progress was a disease in human society. The explosive development of technology was analogous to the growth of cancer cells, and the results would be identical. The exhaustion of all sources of nourishment, the destruction of organs, and the final death of the host body. Okay, so let's get something out of the way before we go any further. I'm not a scientist. No shit. I'm not a scientist. I don't know much slash anything about orbital mechanics or astrodynamics, or if there's even a difference between the two. And I'd never heard of the three-body problem before reading this book. But I've read a fair bit of hard sci-fi, so I was pretty sure I was up to the challenge. Even when I'd read a few reviews from people who said they couldn't get through it because the hard sci-fi part was too dense. But rather than be put off, I was actually really excited to have my mind blown. So, was my mind blown? Yeah, it was pretty blown. But, were the hard parts as hard as some people were saying? In my view, no. But maybe these people haven't read Greg Egan. They certainly weren't so hard that I couldn't get through the book. In fact, for me, the harder parts were some of the best parts. Whenever I review a book, I like to spend some time looking at the concepts and themes. But now we know I'm not an orbital mechanic. Did I, did I say that right? I shall now attempt to do the same with my average comprehension. The concepts in this book convince me that there certainly aren't enough hard sci-fi books being published today. Because not only were they staggering, they actually made me want to go and learn more about it. Which can only be a good thing, right? I'll talk a bit about one particular mind-blowing concept that I literally couldn't put down when I was reading it in the spoiler part of the video. Aside from the hard sci-fi concepts that litter the book, I was gripped from the very beginning because of the political backdrop that first sets the scene. The book starts with a number of chapters that are set during the Chinese Cultural Revolution and casts the movement and the government's role in a negative and critical light. I was fascinated by this, not only because of the subject matter, but also because of the recent news reports of Chinese enforced censorship in Hong Kong. So I did a little digging because I wanted to know if these chapters were included in the Chinese version or whether they had been censored. And it turns out that they are included, but they actually feature in the middle of the book rather than the beginning. This is according to Ken Liu, translator of The Three Body Problem in an Ask Me Anything thread on Reddit. He revealed that when the three-body problem was first published, the Cultural Revolution chapters were moved to the middle of the book because it was around the time of the 30th anniversary of the Cultural Revolution, and such topics were deemed sensitive, he said. Interestingly, at least I think it's interesting, someone asked Liu if he thought the entire book was a criticism of the Cultural Revolution, which I'll admit did cross my mind, and I'll go into this a little bit in the spoiler section of the video. Liu said, As the translator, I feel it's not my place to endorse specific interpretations of the book. 
I can say that denouncing the Cultural Revolution is not at all controversial in China. That's the official position of the current government, and the overwhelming majority of China's population view the Cultural Revolution as a time of horror and mistake. I'll be sure to leave a link to that thread below if you're interested. I'm a simple man without a lot of complicated twists and turns. Look down my throat, and you can see out my ass. On the characters and the writing, the three-body problem was, on the whole, well written and well translated, for all I know anyway. It did, however, suffer from a couple of issues in my view. The first is something that you often see with sci-fi on the harder side of the spectrum, and that's its light approach to characterization. We have a couple of what you might call main characters or protagonists in the book, Yi and Wang. I found much more time was spent developing Yi's character than Wang's. In part one of the book, which looks at Yi's survival through the political upheaval of the Cultural Revolution, Sishin describes its physical and psychological effects on Yi perfectly. We got to understand her, delve into her motives and internal narrative. As readers we begin to feel what she's going through, we empathise with her and come to realise there's something very tragic about this character. With Wang, however, we got considerably less of this sort of attention, which made it harder for me to attach any emotional investment in him as a character. We learn he has a wife and a child, which come into it very briefly in the background, and then they seem to disappear as if they were irrelevant to the character. Maybe they were, but it would have been nice to explore how his wife and child were affected by Wang's actions and what was going on in the story. But, like I said, this isn't too unusual for hard sci-fi of this nature, and while I do like more character development, it didn't detract too much from the story as a whole, which was able to stand up without it. What I also really liked about the book was that it had a unique tone to it, that in a way bordered on mystery and even horror in places. It was like reading an episode of Black Mirror. Another area I want to quickly touch on in the writing is the dialogue. It was a bit exposition heavy in areas and also clunky, which I personally put down to translation. Details and nuance can get lost in translation and some things might seem odd when put directly in English simply because you're not part of that culture. I think there was certainly an element of this with the three body problem. I found the dialogue unrealistic in places so that I thought to myself, no one would say something like that. But then again, in China, they might very well say that, and what I'm reading is a very literal translation. It's something to bear in mind, but certainly wasn't something that detracted from my enjoyment of the book too much. So, now I'm going to go into a couple of spoiler thoughts. If you don't want to watch this part, you can skip ahead to the time at the bottom of the screen for my summary and star rating. As I've said, it's in the last part of the book that feels denser in terms of its hard sci-fi concepts, and this is something I really enjoyed reading. Especially the part that depicts a massive project to unfold a single proton into two dimensions, etch microprocessor circuitry onto its surface, and turn it into a supercomputer. I mean, how? What? How? And just as one can unfold a cube into a flat, larger cross, or a 4D hypercube into larger three-dimensional shape, the alien scientists in the book unfold the proton's compact 11-dimensional shape into lower dimension shapes, each more expansive than the last. With the 2D proton so large it has to be manipulated in orbit, because it wraps around the planet. In the novel's postscript, Sishin talks about scales and existences that far exceed the bounds of human sensory perception. Playing with the macro and micro scales in this sequence was not only mind-blowing, but he also made it really effing creepy. I mean, that eye. Another thing I wanted to touch on is the potential parallels between the Earth Tristellaris movement and the Cultural Revolution in terms of how it broke into factions that turned on each other in the same way the Red Guards were described as doing in the beginning of the book. But maybe I'm reading too much into that. I'd love to get your thoughts. The three-body problem, in my opinion, is up there with some of the best recently published works of science fiction, and I have no problem in calling it an instant modern classic. 
it successfully subverts the somewhat overly familiar trope of aliens invading Earth and, rather than have the human race fighting collectively against them, introduces themes of rivaling factions that seem all too and disturbingly familiar when I take a look up from whatever book I'm reading to pay attention to what's happening in the world. As a piece of hard science fiction, it introduces scientific concepts in a way that is cleverly told through an original premise that doesn't get lost in translation, despite the fact I suspect some parts actually are. Taking all this into account, I gave the three-body problem 4.5 stars out of 5. So that's it for this review, thank you so much for watching. I love reading your thoughts and comments, so please let me know in the comment section what you think of the book. Don't forget to like the video to support the channel and also subscribe if you haven't already if you want more videos from me. We talk about all things books here, mostly sci-fi with a little bit of fantasy too. Until next time guys, happy reading.